you know, especially for developers, managers to understand that it's, it is in fact a valued service because this third party CIs, you know, occasionally crash and have to be fixed. Um, and people always need to prioritize that work. Um, so what we want to talk about real quickly is just why we have it, what it does for you as an OpenStack user, and then um, encourage you to take action. Um, and there are a bunch of references at the bottom of the page, um, just on some general stuff. Um, so we'll be having the PTG next week where we do the planning for the upcoming release. Um, so that planning etherpad, I mean, the PTG is open. So if you want to attend, that's good. Or if you have something you'd like to see the Cinder team discuss, that would be great as well. Um, I need to, to point out that I can't hear anything. <laughs> so if you want to get my attention, um, you can just go like this. Um, or use the raise hand function in uh, Zoom, which I don't know if that's working for me or not either. Okay, um, but anyway, in the references, so the PTG planning, if there's something you'd like the Cinder team um, to address or something, you know, some kind of use case you've got that's weird or some kind of workaround you've had to do that's unpleasant, um, it would be good for us to know about that. So if you give us some information on the etherpad, that would be fine. Um, and also, if you could attend, that would be even better. Uh, there's the link to general project information. Um, it's the new contributors page, but it's actually turned out to be a pretty useful thing because it's one place stop where you can see all the deliverables that the Cinder project has, and also the communication methods we use if you wanna get in touch with us and just general procedures. Um, so it's, it's kind of a useful place. And then focusing on what we're talking about today, there's some links to the uh, to driver information. So there's a, a general overall page about Cinder drivers. And then there are a couple of wiki pages for people who are setting up the third party CI. Um, and then the how to contribute a driver page goes into, so if you're curious about what people have to go through to get a driver in, that's a good place to look. And then uh, as far as setting one up, um, we have links in the, um, somewhere in the how to contribute a driver page to, um, Luigi, what's that thing called? Uh, that um, RDO hosts, I'm trying to remember, uh, Software Factory. So we were encouraging people to use soft, the Software Factory distribution um, for CI. I don't know that anyone's actually done that. There was a quick um, tutorial yesterday on getting started with Zool. So you can take a look at the, um, the recording from that. Um, and that's another way um, to get some kind of third party CI set up. Okay, I think um, we've got like a forum here. So let's get started. All right, so th the main thing is, as you know, Cinder provides an API interface to allow you to use block storage in OpenStack. And all that stuff has to actually go somewhere. And that's in the storage backends. And if you look at the Cinder logo, which I don't have available at the moment, you'll see that it's a horse, but it's the back end of the horse because the back ends are extremely important because that's where all the stuff actually goes. Now, the problem we have as upstream developers is that we don't have access to all the possible hardware that people might use with Cinder. And so that's where the third party CI comes in. So we've gone back and forth on this over the years, all the projects have that rely on different types of hardware is, do you keep the, the code for the drivers that interact between the backends and Cinder itself in tree, or does it have to be stored somewhere else? And then when somebody wants to use it, they go and get it and then they put everything together themselves we've tried to come up with a compromise. So to make it easier for operators, we do keep drivers in tree. Um, but in order to have them tested, we ask that the contributors keep a third party CI system so that the tests that we run in the gate with the community um, backend, so like Ceph or the LVM one, which is really only for test, we don't recommend that you actually use it. Um, right, 
those same tests can be run with the individual vendor backends. So what that does is it enables us to know that when we make a change to Cinder, we haven't done something that breaks the backend and the vendors can know that, right, that's the case also. So it gives you a bunch, it gives you some reliability. So the vendors are asked, so one of the conditions to having your driver in tree is that you agree to run the third party CI and on each change that's submitted, right, this third party CIs will report back. And so that way we have some kind of feedback about what exactly is going on in the whole Cinder ecosystem. Um, right, so it's important for our project because we don't have access to the hardware. So the vendors do, so they host this. Um, and it's important for operators because then they have some kind of confidence that the code we're working on upstream isn't going to break the uh, kind of hardware they're using as a backend. And I guess this is where we should introduce ourselves, um, which somebody might have reminded me, except I can't hear anything. Okay, so leading the discussion today, you got me. I'm the current Cinder PTL. Um, Luigi Toscano, who's, I'm at Red Hat. Luigi's also at Red Hat, and he's a Cinder Tempest plugin core. And we've got Lucio Secchi, who's, who works with NetApp, and he's the most recent uh, Cinder core. Um, so we have several perspectives, um, but the point of the forum is to try to get feedback from people who are OpenStack users. So what we'd like to hear is, um, well, I guess I've said, so my pitch is I want operators to, to communicate with the vendors of the hardware that they use, that this is a valued service and that they are glad that third-party CI is running um, so that they have, so that there's a guarantee to the greatest extent possible, right? That you can do with software, that the code works with the backend that they have purchased. Um, okay, so my problem is if I stop talking, I can't hear anything, um, but that's probably what I should do. So it looks like, so from the etherpad anyway, it looks like we have no operators here, <laughs> which kind of defeats the whole purpose. Um, if you've come in late, uh, please take a look at the etherpad and uh, add your name to it. Um, otherwise, we could have our Cinder weekly meeting right now, if that's all. That's Can we get Brian dialed in? Use the call in for Zoom. All right, well. Let me see. That's so there's a theoretically I can use the call in. All right, I'm going to shut up. I need so I need somebody else to like <laughs> fill in time while I try to uh, figure out what the call in number is. It's in the Zoom chat. Okay. I'm going to have to. Gotham put the uh, number in the chat. Everybody paste it again. <laughs> It's a little funny how hard it is to like get his attention to like say where it is <laughs> and he can't hear you yeah no yeah like and i, I don't know if picking yes. him on irc would help oh i think it's something on his end 
Uh, I'm not sure exactly. He was having issues when he was trying to connect originally. We huh. suggested he restart his computer, but he was like, uh, uh, I don't think that would help. So <laughs> <laughs> he was having nice problems to yesterday too. Oh, yes. Nice to meet you. Okay. Can you hear us now? I can hear, I can at least hear Jay. So. Yay. All right. Yay. Sibilance, check, check, check. All right, you nice. can hear me, so. Yeah. Yep. All right, so put on headset or is the hearing okay? If you want to get real Zoom fancy, you can link your phone number and your video together so that it's a, it doesn't also have your phone number in the list but like that's not i don't i i do not want to get zoom fancy that's fine <laughs> <laughs> but thank you <laughs> no in fact what i'm going to do is as soon as this is over i've got to remove zoom and reboot my system because i had really bad problems um anyway it's a long story it has nothing to do with uh third party ci so um let's do some forum action here people So this is much more like a, a typical forum session um, that I'm used to. So on Monday, we had like 127 people show up. So I think a lot of people came to it just because it was the first thing listed, um, which was fine. Um, but this is a big letdown. Um, we're 100 participants short, but we can make up for it in quality. Um, so. All right, there's some action on the etherpad. I can make you the host, Brian, so you can um, share the etherpad if you want. Oh, okay. Well, I always find it easier to share the etherpad separately from the, because it's hard to read on the, in the Zoom, I always think. Okay. So Go I personally like to have the Zoom where I look at all the people and then the etherpad to work in. Um, but, okay, so can we, I should at least. Can you put oh, the link to the, the etherpad in the chat? Somebody? Sure. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, well, you beat me to it. Okay. Thanks, Gordon. Okay. Um, all right, so while we're waiting for everyone to get up courage to participate, um, right, what can attendees expect to learn supported versus unsupported drivers? All right, so here's the deal with that. So as I said earlier, we have um, the drive under our entry, so they're part of the code repository. And so when Cinder gets packaged, they're included. So part of including that is running the third party CI. So for a driver to be supported, it's supposed to have an identifiable maintainer, but it's supposed to also have a CI that's reporting on all the patches that are being proposed to Cinder so that we get feedback. Now, occasionally, um, you know, the third party CI crashes, people are having trouble getting it started back up again, hasn't responded in a while. So then the driver can be marked unsupported. So what this means is that in order to use the driver, you have to set a flag in the Cinder configuration file. And so that notifies you as an operator that you're working with an unsupported driver. Unsupported drivers are eligible to be removed in the next development cycle. So if you're using an unsupported driver, you do want to communicate with your vendor as soon as possible to find out what their intentions are. We've been um, carrying some unsupported drivers as long as they don't break our gates. Um, but the problem with an unsupported driver is that you're not getting the third party CI running. So you don't know for sure that changes that are being made to Cinder would not in fact affect that driver. 
So it's really important to keep this third party CI running. And in fact, I mean, you know, it's it's a good Cinder's a good community. I mean, most of the vendors who whose drivers have gone unsupported have made, you know, changes within the next cycle to get the CI running again. It's usually a CI problem. Um, and so there's that. Now recently we've had a case with the with the fiber channel zone manager driver where brocade decided to stop supporting it um, with the train release because they didn't want to upgrade to Python 3. And as you know, um, Open, Python 2 has gone end of life and OpenStack is now all Python 3. Um, Gorka recently fixed the bugs that were preventing the driver from running with Python 3. Um, the driver's unsupported, but we're carrying it along. Um, if somebody's using that in production, um, it would be nice to talk to them to find that out. Um, we'd like to get third-party CI. So what we're doing right now is on a best effort, we're carrying the brocade fiber zone, I mean, fiber channel zone manager driver, um, but we've only run CI with the first release candidate for Victoria. So at that point, we know it's working but we don't have the ongoing CI that the other drivers have um, to keep us, you know, to keep it safe. So just so you're aware of that. Um, I mean, I think, right, everybody understands why the third party CI is important, um, right? We're working with software and there's no telling what changes we make might have consequences elsewhere. And the way to know that is to actually do the testing. And so that's that's what the third party CI does. And just one thing about the third party CI, it's called that. I mean, the third party is the vendor who's um, supporting that driver. It's not like there's some kind of third party, um, you know, neutral board that does the certification. Um, it's just a service that's run by the vendor of the driver to make sure everything continues to work. All right, so I'm obviously just filling time here. So I'm going to be quiet and uh, let other people. And my dog wants to get in here. So did, did you do an audit recently, Brian, of the CIs? What is the health at the moment? We be quiet. So my dog is entering the room. Sorry. Okay. So yeah. So the third party CI situation is um, not that good. So it, it's kind of mixed. We have a few CIs that all the time, and then we have the rest of them that don't. So I didn't go ahead and push in a lot of so. There are two things. With the worldwide pandemic situation, a lot of people have been having trouble getting into data centers mm -hmm. to get their CI fixed. So um, I thought that was, so anyway, so I didn't actually do the audit and start kicking people out. But I'm going to have to do that for um, before M1. Or we, we can talk about it at the PTG next week. Um, it has, if you if you look at well when I looked at the there's a link on here for the uh, I think yeah for the current CI results um, yesterday they were all messed up because Garrett was crashed so I don't know whether that's stabilized or not um, but if you if you scroll through. Right, the success rate is uh, kind of miserable, actually. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, Jay.
yeah, I, you know, I, so, uh, there are a couple of different ways this discussion can go. Um, it's not really going anywhere at the moment. Um, so, so let's, let's just spitball some ideas. Um, there, you know, you, you have the people who have said um, that third party CI was an idea. It was a good idea. It hasn't worked. Um, do we give up? So, so there's a double edged sword. If we give up on enforcing um, CIs, nobody's going to do them. And I think there's at least some value in still having test. Um, that shows that those vendors are involved and are testing their code. Um, it, it looks like from the Etherpad, there are at least a, a few people here who are users, um, uh, end users. So is there anybody who, who feels better that we have the third party CIs and that their drivers are being tested by the vendor? Because that's one question is, does, does it mean anything to the consumers? If, if any of the consumers want to speak up, that would be awesome. <laughs> uh, Jay, if you're talking about the three people in the end user or someone who doesn't fit into the above. Yeah. Uh, so they are all from NetApp. Uh, okay. But they are working for Manila, so ah, uh, yeah. okay. they are and not they shouldn't be Cinder. <laughs> That's okay. why they shouldn't they... be users either, right? <laughs> okay, I was hoping maybe they were users, but but no. Okay, um, I have a feeling end users right now probably wouldn't care too much until their storage of choice stops working right. Yeah, I think I, I kind of agree with that. And that was part of why I wanted to just surface that we have this third party CI and that people should worry about it. <laughs> um, but I wanted to check about a couple of problems that you uh, mentioned, Brian. One is, yeah, I mean, right now, it, you know, getting access to their infrastructure is really hard, et cetera. So I think that is, I think, the biggest concern even I've heard in Manila. Um, so technically, we, you know, as long as they're able to post results that are off their dev stack that they have, uh, you know, that they've run against their storage system and stuff, we, we've been fine. Um, although, it, uh, I mean, we've not had the policy that uh, we, we, we'd remove backend, uh, sorry, mark them unsupported in Manila at all. Uh, but there is there have been times when they've uh, when vendors have tried to push fixes, but their CI system is not working. So we've we've been okay with them, you know, set running tempest tests on a, on a uh, you know on on a test system somewhere else that's not the CI system, and just posting it on the on the review, and such. Do we know of other projects? I, uh, I was going to say that the people who um, I mean I think. All the patches I've approved this cycle. I mean, the, the CI like wasn't responding all the time, but we at least got a CI result on the actual patch. Um, so that is kind of a plus. So it, it really seems like it's um, it's been more of a um, you know the situation keeping the CI running uh, just in general as like a preventive thing. Um, Yeah, and, and we discussed things in the past, at least in the Cinder context, right? That we'd, we, mm -hmm. instead of having per commit testing, we'd, you know, put up a patch and have them all vote on that patch periodically and such. Uh, so uh, have, have those been, uh, you know, shelved? Have those ideas been shelved? Um. I have to ask because I remember that there were patches by Sean that said, "Yeah." Uh, so there, there were patches by Sean, I guess, a, a while ago that uh, you know all CIs were supposed to pass on this because this is a no op change, and then there was a patch that broke uh, Cinder Volume Manager, 
and just said, no, all CIs are supposed to fail on this. Uh, and and there were yeah, no, were I missing, so. Yeah, I haven't done any checks like that recently. Um, it's been more just, you know. Following the poor commit testing and such, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's mostly, I mean, so we've, we've been able to pretty much make sure that for any of the changes that have gone through, the CI has run for that particular change. Um, but yeah, I haven't done a general, I mean, you can see from the results, if we did just a general patch, you know, patch that should pass or patch that should fail, um, we would mostly not get responses. Um, so I think right now it's, we're at the situation where we haven't merged code without knowing that there's been a CI run, um, but we don't have the preventative nature of, you know, ongoing CI for all changes. Um, that, right. The wider question, so that, that's one thing is just getting the current test that we have running. There's also a question of, you know, how thorough the test coverage is. Um, right. And it's always better to have more tests. Um, but there have been some changes. Um, we'll talk about at the PTG um, that haven't broken anything. Um, well, that's not true. They have broken stuff, but it hasn't been detected. Um, so the, the third party CI, it does give us some confidence, but unless it's ongoing, um, right? Well, if it's not ongoing, it gives you less confidence. And then with the Cinder Tempest plugin, as long as those jobs are being run, we can add tests and then increase the test coverage across the board vendors. Um, and it doesn't really change much on their end as long as we're pulling down the latest version of the plugin and running those tests. So, I mean, my, my feeling is that it's an overall nice system to have, um, but you know, it, it entails cooperation on the part of everybody participating. Um, Um, as you mentioned, Cinder Tempest plugin. So um, we discussed this many, multiple times, I, if I remember correctly. Um, but for example, I, I think that the number of third party CIs, which are also running tests from Cinder Tempest plugin, is not so high. And I mean, um, I don't want to get too in the, the technical details, but we also have the problems that many of the CIs, at least looking at the jobs that are running, um, so when you can get to the logs, because in some cases you cannot easily, I mean, the logs are not easily accessible. Um, this seems to be um, the old legacy jobs, um, not native Zool jobs, and that shows. And sometimes you can't even easily find the Tempest results um, or whatever other tests they are running. So it's not clear that the logs are not, um, are not com as complete as the, even the legacy jobs that we have we had on the main CI. Um, and, and I'd like also to stress the fact that, um, uh, highlight the fact that uh, um, the legacy jobs are probably going to break at some point in the not far future because we are trying to deprecate them uh, in general. So, and that means um, it's not the problem with legacy jobs. The problem is that we're going to try to deprecate dev stack gate and it's all the legacy jobs depend on dev stack gate. So um, this is probably, uh, even though most of the jobs have been ported for the main CI in the, during this cycle, we just have a few leftovers, um, probably for still um, right now, DevStagate is going to stay, but uh, at Wallaby, um, it's probably going to disappear. So that's another call for the third party CI, um, CI's um, maintainers to 
take a look and try to fix some of the issues. Now, I know we discussed about this many times in the past and I don't really have a solution, um, but it's really time to, um, I don't know, try to have them, uh, to contact them for real uh, in, a, in a way that, uh, um, uh, that we can have some kind of results and try, and that may be the, the time to see what, which, which problem are they uh, encountering apart from setting up Zool itself. But uh, um, that's really the time to uh, check again the general status. Well, while we, we had a testing group, uh, this was like before I was working on Cinder. Um, so on the, in the wiki, there's traces of, there was like a CI group that had meetings occasionally. Maybe we should resurrect that. Um, and just uh, because you're right, I mean, as the, inf as the infrastructures are aging, um, right, they're getting less reliable and pretty soon they're not gonna work at all because the stuff they depend on isn't gonna exist. Um, so we do need to spread that around. Um, so yeah. are any of the vendors here interested in doing something like that? Or, or sharing their notes on uh, how they've, uh, you know, upgraded from legacy jobs to Zool V3, or they don't use Zool, they use something else. Um, but it would be nice to have some vendor uh, publish what they do. I think there was something in the past uh, from the Cinder community. Yeah, there, there's some stuff in the, in the wiki. Um, but it's starting to get kind of uh, old. Um, so yeah, it would be good to revisit that. All right, well, let's, um, I think at the, getting close to time. I think at the PTG, let's discuss this and see how much interest there is among the uh, current Cinder team to host some type of meeting and then get the word out to vendors and uh, see what happens. So I, I, I think the kind of general consensus we're coming to here is that we don't want to stop doing third party CI. Um, we know they're not reliable, but it's at least a litmus test as to whether that, you know, vendor is participating and that the driver is cared and fed. Um, and that, you know, let's maybe just put a little time into um, seeing if we can rally the troops. I, I think one of the biggest problems is the fact that we've never had really, well, it, it's hard to do and we've never had great documentation explaining how to do it. So maybe uh, we can talk about that more at the PTG. I mean, one question I have is, what is the alternative? Um, you know, what, I, what I'm getting from my dev team is that uh, they would prefer to have something they could do in their own infrastructure rather than out. Um, uh, but if it's not as good as the public infrastructure, then that's a factor to take into account. Well, for the, the third party CI, it's actually is running in in the vendor infrastructure. It's just reporting the results back up to the community. Right. No, I understand that, but oh. but but the alternative is to take your stuff and go run it in the publicly hosted infrastructure, right? Or do I misunderstand? Well, yeah, no, because this actually runs against the vendor hardware, not not against some sort of simulation. Ah, well then, yeah, we absolutely need this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so the alternative is Wild West and we don't have anybody test. Um, so, but, I, you know, I think, I believe Ironic still looks at their results. Um, I, I would assume Nova is using it. I'm not sure though. Yeah. I mean, just because you don't enforce that everybody runs these tests doesn't mean they don't do it. Hopefully they do it, but to have visible results is more the 
discussion, right? And enforcing right. the visible visibility of those results and success of them, hopefully. Yeah. And I, by the way, I haven't met anybody. Just want to say hi. I'm with Kioxia, and we're in a weird posi position because we're we don't make servers; we make the storage devices. So when we think hardware, we're thinking about you know CM6, CM5, you know individual uh, yeah. NVMe devices. So it, there's a subtlety there that even goes deeper, actually. Gotcha. And interacts with what PCI gen and you know what your network bandwidth is and yada yada. So it's. Uh, yeah, testing's a, a factor for us. <laughs> well, since nobody's screaming, I think we're at least doing the right things. And the fact that, you know, we, we watch the results where we, we don't come out with a baseball bat like we did at one point. We at least, you know, come with a, a, a pool noodle and kind of tap people and say, hey, are you paying attention? And it seems like things have resolved themselves in the past. So that's good. So, um, yeah. sorry. So uh, one thing that uh, I believe in that is that uh, even if the third party is uh, not enforce it anymore in, in some fut in a near future. Uh, it's interest from NetApp to keep running those tests because it's very useful to avoid uh, issues in production, which is much worse than uh, having to fix the CI. And one thing that uh, I noted uh, when uh, answering questions for, from new vendors joining Cinder project is that uh, software factory seems not uh, obvious to install and configure. <laughs> and uh, uh, talking about uh, ourselves in, at NetApp, we still run legacy jobs with ZooV2 instead of ZooV3. And we will be impacted when DevStack gate is deprecated. And we need to uh, pr prioritize the, the uh, tasks necessary to migrating it to Zuvi 3. So um, yeah, it would be very helpful if uh, someone starts uh, deploying software factory and tell what are the main issues on doing that. Uh, the uh, the guy who talked to me last time was uh, Nomura from Hitachi. So he started trying to deploy Software Factory, but um, it was too complicated for him. And then he used a bunch of uh, scripts, I think Ansible playbooks, uh, called SOSCI. Uh, it's an uh, old script from John Griffith. Yep. And yep. And it's working so far, but if DevStake Gate is deprecated, he will need uh, a lot of time to migrate his uh, recently deployed CI to ZuV3. So we, uh, unfortunately, he didn't join this meeting today. I think he's at Japan. So it's. So, but, yep. so when is the the dev stack gate being deprecated? Now. I mean, uh, the, the original plan was Three to deprecate ago. it now at the cutting of Victoria. Uh, but uh, that's we still have a few legacy jobs left, so it's still working right now. But uh, for Wallaby, that should be the cut date. Of course, if all the... Um, Third-party CIs are going to be broken by this. Maybe the TC will say, no, let's wait it for a bit while. But let's not take it. I, I would say let's not take it as an excuse to delay the work. Okay. Uh, because it's, I mean, it's, if it's going to take some time, it's not going to take just one cycle because it's going to take more than that. So uh, sooner it starts, uh, the better it is. Um, just a question about this, things about with software factory, but did the people who tried to set it up uh, did they try also to contact the software factory developers? Because um, so far, when whenever I 
I mean, I didn't have to set it up myself, but whenever I asked them for details and information, they always said, yes, please contact us. We are ready to answer questions. We, they, I, I think they still have a pending patch to improve the document. There is already some documentation on how to set it up and integrate with the OpenStack to create a third party CI, but they also had the pending review to extend the documentation. So it's kind of like, um, they are waiting for feedback, but if the feedback doesn't come, they cannot improve and so on. So it's... Um... Yeah, when I talked to a guy from Hitachi, he already uh, had deployed the, the ZooV2. So yeah, it was too late. So Gorka um, yeah, and so, uh, uh, Zoo hands-on series uh, tutorial of how to deploy it. So yeah, yeah, I it's think. basically yeah. You you had a look and it didn't help. It will certainly be very helpful for me, <laughs> and I can uh, talk to to him again and, and advise him to start uh, looking at it as well, because yeah, it will, his CI will stop working uh, sooner or later. So yeah, thanks for, for this. Yeah, maybe uh, we can, after you try it and, and if you encounter problems, maybe we can get in touch with the developers and maybe have a session with them to to see what's going on or something like that. Sure. Yeah, and we'll have Chuck's team setting up a brand new CI, so um, we can hopefully get some feedback from them. Whose team is that? It's the Kioxia team. Oh. He's right next to you in the, uh, yeah. In my room. <laughs> You're right next to each other. Yeah, we don't know anything. So forgive our ignorance. I'm trying desperately to catch up. Okay. Um, and, hence the stinky Zorilla question. <laughs> <laughs> and as usual in developer land, this is a very deep question. It led me to this whole world of the new icons. And oh my God. Okay. So, um, would would you be so at one point Sean had started a and I we may be over time and we could cover this in the PTG I don't know um, yeah I think so 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 something to to maybe discuss I know at one point in the past Sean had started a a process to try to spin up his own CI system just to see if we have the documentation and the information to do it. Um, and I, I don't know where he ever got with that, but you know, it might be an opportunity here if you're bringing a system up, Chuck, and you're looking to uh, get involved and help that we could work with you to update the documentation accordingly um, that we have out there and, and kind of come up. We've been in the need of coming up with a repeatable documented process for bringing CIs up for a while. Um, well, it's the one thing I can do is write. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and Ben, if we can, as a community, you know, I know you, Lucio, and Luigi have done um, work around this recently, can help support him to get him there. Then that I think that would be a good step in the right direction. I mean, I mean, what we're bringing next week is actually an architectural question. Um, uh, and we don't know OpenStack well enough and really we'll rely on your guys' uh, experience and wisdom to guide us on how to do what we're trying to do. Um, but we do, we, you know, the, the essential issue is we do resilience from the client side. Uh, you know, we use a little agent that configures MD RAID on the host computers to write to multiple targets in parallel on the back end over NVMe OF. And... Uh, we're just trying to figure out how we 
bring that into the OpenStack setup. Cool. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll just bring our best guess and have you guys guide us on what we should do. Um, yeah. Sounds good. That's that's what we're here for. Yeah. Cool. All right. Should be good. We're yeah, working our we're deck. Here. We're gonna we're gonna drive around it with Brian tomorrow, and you know, we'll, hopefully we'll be ready. Uh, but yeah, the CI will be the next thing. Cool. Okay. Um, I think we're over time, so I guess we should stop. Um, thanks everyone for attending. Although thank you, just been us. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. So put notes on the Etherpad if you have questions to follow up. Um, that'd be fine. Um, and thanks everyone for attending. Enjoy the rest of the week. And uh, I think I'm going to see everybody next week at the PTG. So. And I love the donkey. I just think that is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're proud of it. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, talk to you guys later this week or next week. Thanks, okay. Brian. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.